Hello, viewers. Thank you for tuning in to Seeing the Impossible Faith Center. My name is Pastor Greg Marilla. I'm always excited, and I feel privileged and honored when you turn on these videos. I want to thank all those that out there in YouTube and uh, media, social media, that have been watching these videos. Um, I pray to God that it will minister to you and bring whatever you need in whatever area that is needed. The word of God, Jesus says in John 6, 63, Jesus says, the words that I speak to you, they're spirit and life. So you, we need to be speaking and we need to be hearing words of spirit and life. You know, there are words of spirit and death. Some of us speak spirit and death. We need to be speaking spirit and life. Praise the Lord. Before I came up to the altar, I was talking to some of the ministers and the deacons, and the Lord gave me a revelation real quickly. If you want prosperity in your life, understand your purpose and walk in peace. When you walk in purpose and in peace, you will get prosperity. Praise the Lord. All right? Now you have to figure out what's your purpose so that you can be in peace. Amen? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes and go to the throne. Gracious Father, we come before you. I feel a, a pre the presence of, of serenity in this place, Father. And Lord, I ask you to grant us the serenity so that we can accept the things that we cannot change. I, I ask you to give us courage to change the things that we can. And Father, I thank you for your wisdom to know the difference. I thank you for your wisdom to know the difference. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, amen, amen. You know what we do. We give God a wonderful applause. Let's do that. And then we surrender to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. If you're so kind, open up your journal. A journal. Open up your journal, please. And I'll open up, open up your Bible. So also I'll give you a scripture as soon as I can. The last time we were together, we spoke about it is important that we understand uh, where the battle is taking place. Remember, um, it's important for us to understand where is the battle taking place. If you're not going to let your hurt minister a mess anymore in your life, you have to understand that you have... Um, defensive weapons to use and you also have um, praise the Lord not only do you have defensive weapon to use but you also have uh, weapons of attack okay so um, we, we said the last time we were together uh, this spiritual fight that we have let's go to 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 that's what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do right now 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 It's verse 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Please. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. It's good to see you all. I mean it. Each and every one of you. When I don't see you, I'm, I'm always, I always have you in my mind and my heart. <laughs> Understand that it is my job to keep you in remembrance. You understand? If I'm your pastor and you call me pastor, then it's my job to keep you in remembrance. Don't get upset with that. At least somebody's praying for you. Praise the Lord. Jeez, you need that, believe me, <laughs> you need it. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says this, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedient when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, go to, go to 3, go to 3, 
verse 3. Stay there. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down stronghold. So the weapons that God has given you, the spiritual weapons that God has given you for attack, they're, they're strong because they can, ca- they can pull down stronghold. But you got to know how to use them. If you don't know how to use them, <laughs> you're losing the battle, okay? So write this down. Weapon of defense and weapon of attack. And then you have to also know, you have to also know what type of battle am I fighting? If I'm fighting a physical battle, right? If I'm fighting a physical battle, then I can use physical weapon. If I'm in a war, a physical war, then I can use an M16 to defend myself. Get it? Or a tank. Good to see you, Ray. You and Jonah. Or a tank or a a grenade. But I'm not fighting a physical war. I'm fighting a spiritual war which I cannot see with my carnal eyes. And this spiritual war takes place, you know where? In your mind. In your mind. The mind is the battlefield. Because the mind is the battlefield. Write this down. I'm going to give you this again. You have to be very important. You have to be very careful with rebellious thoughts. Rebellious thought. That's a trigger. That opens up things in your life that you don't need. That works in your imagination. So rebellious, one. Number two, imagination. These rebellious thoughts work in your imagination. And number three, they come to reason with you. (laughs) What a wise guy, huh? They come to reason with you. When you're doing wrong, yeah, it gives you some type of justification. You had to do that. That's why you did it. No, you you didn't have to do that. You chose to do that. And then number four, it, it opens up arguments. Argument. If you're constantly arguing, somebody's mind is screwed up where you're at. Could be yours or theirs. Can I get an amen? If you're constantly arguing, everything is an argument. Everything is a fight. Everything is a fight. Something's wrong. See? And then it take possession of your thought life. So number one, rebellious thoughts works where? And imagination. Number two, it comes for what reason? To reason. To reason with you. And then it opens up what? Arguments. And then uh, five, I believe it is, it takes over your thought life. How does it take over my thought life, Pastor? By coming against the knowledge of God. Everything that you've been taught about God I just said three, ma- three powerful words to you. Purpose, peace, and prosperity. You have to be in your purpose. When you're in your purpose, then you're in a place of peace. David, one of your purpose is to be a father to those two child. So when you father them, you feel peace. You feel like, I'm doing my job. Ray, one of your purposes besides your business is Jonah. When you love on her, when you take care of her, you feel like you're doing your husband's purpose. The husband's job. That's your purpose. Why did you marry the woman? To take care of her and for her to take care of you. So you both can become one. See what I mean? So that brings you peace. You, we know when we're good and we know when we're bad. Praise the Lord. We know when we're in order, and we know when we're out of order. There's no, there's no buts and what's about it. You can have all the attitude you want. You know when something is coming against the knowledge of God. Family, let me tell you something. Never give up the knowledge of God. It's your surviving kit. 
it will allow you to survive. So that's why it's important for you to understand the battleground. Where am I? What type of battle am I going through? Is it physical? Is sickness and disease coming against my body? That's a physical battle. You think argument is a physical battle. I just told you it's not. It comes from where? Your rebellious thoughts. So that's a spiritual battle. But argument is physical. No, 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 no. It has a seed. Where did the seed came from? Came from your rebellious thoughts. Came from my rebellious thought. I can't stand my wife. I can't believe she's cleaning like that. I ain't looking at anybody. So you don't have to look at me. I know it all. You can't be in control always. And you cannot know it all. You have to turn it over to God. But I don't even know. You say, we, we say that we're Christians, but we don't know how to even, we don't even know how to follow God properly. You know? So God have mercy on us. And mercy is for the people that don't have God. I ain't going to say have God have grace on you, have favor on you. See? Because we're always, always, always trying to control everything around us. That's the problem we have. Stop trying to control things that you cannot control. You can't control it. So you beat your head with a stick. Like that's going to help. So you have to forget the past. What happened yesterday is in the past. Say that everybody with me. What happened yesterday is in the past. What happened this morning is in the past. Some of you had your argument come in here this morning. So you let go, you let God, and then you let live. You let live who? You, you live. <laughs> Very simple. Live in peace. Thank you, daughter. See, God can handle this thing a lot better than you can, but for some reason you feel that you have to tell God a little ant, Excuse me, God, can you move over the throne? I want to sit down. You can't even sit on his toe. His toe looks like a mountain. Compared to you and compared to me. So stop making decisions that affect Write it down. I need to stop making a decision that affects other people and their future. I have to stop bearing the burden. All of us are bearing the burden. It's okay to help, but you can't do everything. You can't. Sometimes you have to say, I can't help you. I'm sorry. I can't. Not, this one I can't. I wish I can, but I can't. I can't do it. So you have to learn how to have the best days of your life when you're feeling the worst. Write that down. You have to learn how to have the best. See, so you're going to have to train yourself. You're going to have to have the best days of your life when you're having the worst. When you're having the worst days of your life, that's when you should be filled with joy. Laughing. <laughs> yeah, all right. Don't let people, but you let people know by your description what you're going through. Speak it through your mouth or you demonstrate it. So you should, have, you, should be having the, you should be having the best time of your life when you're having the worst time of your life. Now, in the natural, this makes no sense. Well, if you keep living in the natural, you're going to lose your mind. You, you cannot know God and then give your back to God and try to do it the way you used to do it. It's not going to work, I'm telling you. Listen, folks, I'm really serious about this especially from the background I come from. When you're in the mafia, you can't get out. Blood in, blood out. Don't play with God. You should have might as well say, nah, I ain't stepping my foot in that church. I ain't stepping. I don't want nothing to do with God. And you would have been fine. You think? Everybody say amen. amen. I'm not screaming at you. I'm loving on you. I'm warning you. I'm not here to shame you. Tell your flesh to shut up and sit down. 
to flesh, you stink. You smell like pork chop. Some of you say, I wish I had some pork chop. <laughs> you always get me in trouble. It's time to move in the spirit and get out of the natural. And in the mind, you have to educate your mind. It is your job to develop your mind. It is your job. To do what? How many of us like love Jesus Christ? To obey Christ. You want to be in, in his image. Is it going to be overnight? Of course not. It's a process. But at least I'd rather have a happy process than a sad process. Because I'm listening to myself. Let me tell you what a stronghold is. A stronghold is like a fortress around your mind. And it won't let you reason with the good of God. How can I get upset with something I have no control over? I'm talking to you in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. It's not sound-minded. Here, your blood pressure is going up the roof. And you think because you take one of those little pills, you got it under control. No, you got to help the little pill. Don't shut me down because I'm teaching good. You have more faith in your doctor than you have in Jesus. Oh, he'll give me a little pill and I'll be fine. Okay, a little pill here, a little pill there, you become a dope pit. <laughs> okay. Your responsibility as God representative is to be able to use the weapons that he's given you so you can break down these strongholds. I've been in church too long. I've been serving God. I know Jesus. When am I going to start using these weapons? When I go to the next life, the truth, the life, the life of truth, because this is the life of lie. Did you hear that? This is the world of lie. The next world is the world of truth. So when I'm going to use it, when I go back to Jesus, he's going to say, son, you don't need it here. Just praise and worship the Father and enjoy your mansion. And don't steal or don't scrape off gold from the streets. <laughs> and yes, you can go swim in the ocean. It looks like glass. <laughs> But no stealing in here. So you have to understand your defensive armor. What is my defensive armor? All right? Let's, um, let's look at Ephesians. You know where I'm taking you. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. And, uh, okay. Yeah it's, um, yeah, it's verse 10, man. 10. Ephesians. I know it's 10, Lord. Thank you. Oh, yes, it is. Hmm. Daughter, please be so kind to give me one of those tissues. Please, thank you. <laughs> Love you, daughter. Thank you so much. Excuse me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. You there? Okay. Should I read it in King James or uh, New Living Translation? King James, New Living Translation. Okay. We'll do both. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's number 10. That's your key for life right there. Not being strong in yourself, but being strong in the Lord. Okay? In the power of his might. His, it's his strength, not your strength. You know, Deacon Rory, like we said before when we got into the building, you know, he's giving you the, uh, the power and the ability do you feel the physical, the pain in your body? Of course you do. But he's giving you the power and the might to pass the test. See, a lot of us think just because we serve God and we love Jesus, we're not going to go through a test. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that you're not going to go through a test. The only guarantee that you have in life is that you're going to go through a test. 
Now, how you go through the test, that's what makes the outcome better. Okay? Number 11, put on the whole armor. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wells of the devil. The shame of the devil. See, the enemy comes and tries to put shame on you. By reminding you the past. Those little stupid things you did in the past. Yeah, okay. Praise the Lord. Yeah, okay. Praise the Lord. Praise God. That's right. And then he says in verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Almost the same thing 2 Corinthians spoke about in chapter 10. We don't wrestle. This fight that you got is not physical, he's saying. But against principalities. I mean, these spirits have authority that has been given to them to torment us. Against powers, against rulers of darkness of the age, against spiritual hosts, their armies. But I have news for you. That we are more than them. And we multiply and they don't. You don't have an uncle spirit, uh, uncle devil, aunt devil, <laughs> cousin devil, brother. You don't have that. The one third that was kicked out of heaven, those are the one doing the torment. Somebody say amen. This is the Bible. See, your family multiplies. Theirs don't. The only difference is that they know your great, 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 great grandfather. And they knew how, can I teach you like I feel it? They knew how, how drunk and horny that old man used to be. I wish I had a witness here. So that thing passed down to you. So you got to break that thing. It's okay to be excited, but with the one God gives you. Okay. I ain't getting no amen in here. Okay. All right. Here we go. And then he goes on in verse uh, 13 saying, Therefore, take up the whole armor. Again, he's telling you, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand. Standing, therefore, having girded your waist, in other words, the belt of truth. Put on the belt of truth. All right? And then he says, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, okay, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the right shoes will give you peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, and which you will be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked one, and then 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So first of all, what we need to do is, now that we're going to take notes, we need to take up, take up the full armor. Don't just put on the shoes and put on the helmet. So every day of your life when you wake up, you should be putting on the full armor. You're going to have to train yourself. It's like a per most of you that have been here in the, in the military know what I'm talking about. I got one, two, three, four, and maybe more here that have been in the military. When you woke up in the morning, you had to put on your uniform. You couldn't walk with civilian clothes out there. They would have done what to you? What they would have done if they catch you with civilian clothes? Okay. They're all laughing at me, so that means you would have probably been put in the... <laughs> Locked up. Okay, so and then the first thing you need to do is put on your full armor every morning before stepping out of your house. Put, the, put every piece of God's armor on you. Because the fight that we're having, Patty, involves life and death. Write this down. The fight that you have every day is a life and death struggle. With evil spirit forces. Okay? You're fighting evil forces. You're fighting evil forces. From where? I can't see it. Here. Here. They come and attack you here. So they're evil forces. So how can I protect myself, Pastor? 
You protect yourself, you hear me, David, by putting on the full armor. Praise the Lord. And then you've got to learn how to sharpen these weapons that you have. How do I sharpen them? By putting them on. By walking in it. Every, every six um, uh, uh, defense weapon here, uh, defense, uh, 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 defense armor, has a purpose. Praise the Lord. And then I love the part that it says, we protect ourselves from evil days. Evil days. Hmm. I don't know we put the AC in here, but it's hot. Praise the Lord. It's hot or it's me. Somebody's hot. He says, above all, wait a minute. Where, where is it? Go, go with me. Where is it? Where well, it says evil days. Come on now. I got it. Thank you, everybody, for helping me. 13 it is, daughter. Therefore, take up the whole armor that you may be able to withstand in the evil days or evil time. Lord, set them free today mentally in the name of Jesus. Let them be able to receive this message that they're not too excited about. They're like asleep in here, Father. Wake them up in Jesus' name. It's telling you right there in 13 that you're going to go through evil times and evil days. Why is that ticking you off? Just because you have Jesus. Jesus went through the same thing too. And he overcame, praise the Lord. So you need to overcome. So this means when you put on the full armor, uh, you protect yourself from evil days or the times of evil. Okay? So what this really means. When you confront forces of evil. When you confront forces of evil. You are dealing with evil times or evil days. You know some days you wake up and it just don't go well for you. Guess who's, who's in, involved with that one? Hmm, yeah, very good, Deacon Frank. That's right, the devil. It, I mean, things just don't happen. You know, things just, oh, my God, look what happened to me. No, it's an attack because they know what's going to happen. The good thing is going to happen to you. See, they're in the spirit so they can see and hear things. And they're like, wow, they're close to their breakthrough. If I can distract them, if I can make them like a mummy, numb her up, numb them up. Boy, this is good. They'll never get the blessing. So we're cheating ourselves out of the blessing. Now, everybody that understands what the past is teaching through the unction of the Holy Spirit, just give me an amen. amen. If you don't give me an amen, you don't have to understand. You're not understanding. So I have to protect myself from evil day. What will cause someone that I give work to to rob from me? Evil time, evil days. I have to make sure that whoever's around me is not a weak link. I'm teaching better than you shout and praise the Lord. And how do I do that? By staying sharp. <laughs> Very simple. Staying aware of my surrounding. Praise the Lord. Keeping my faith going. Getting stronger. Developing my faith. Because I'm going to get challenges. I'll turn on the TV and they'll challenge me. I wish I had a witness in here. And all of a sudden, you catch yourself cursing at the TV. So Sunday, you were praising, now you were cursing. You don't have to say amen, because I, I know that ain't good. So you don't have to say amen. All right? It's not an option, this test that you're going to go through. It's a certainty. You can be certain that you're going to go through something. In fact, it's not scripture. It doesn't indicate that a believer will escape the test. That means that we have to go through the test. All right? You're not going to escape the evil days. You're not going to escape the evil time. You must be prepared to go through it. You have to train yourself. I don't want to lose my mind. I don't want to lose my life. Come on, some of you sometimes, let's be honest, you don't have to raise your hand. Don't you feel some days you're losing it? 
See, I'll put my head down. I don't want to see nobody's hand. So I have to teach you how to keep it together. The worries, the anxiety of this life. I wonder if my family's okay. I wonder if so. I don't. Oh, he, oh. So write this down. We have to prepare to go through it. Whatever we face, Ray, we have to prepare to go through it. Prepare to go through it. Just prepare yourself mentally, spiritually to go through it. Amen. So let, we're going to write now, okay? So the first thing we need to do is put on the belt of truth. That's what he says about girding up your, uh, your waist. Put on the belt of truth. I call it the belt of truth. That's what that is. Put on the belt of truth. It's important that you put on the belt of truth. I'm going to show you some. I'm going to give you some, some illustration. What happens when you don't put on the belt of truth? First of all, your pants falls down and you're showing your butt. When I was in the Department of Correction as a chaplain, they used to take the belt away from the prisoners. They had no belt. They had like an elastic thing, and, you, and, and if they broke the elastic, oh well, it was like a big rubber band. No string, no nothing. That, that should, there you go. And if that broke, oh well, until the next time. So put on the belt of truth. Why? Because you don't want to have any loose garments. Write this down. I'm telling you, this is something powerful. I'm going somewhere with this. When you put on the belt of truth, Patty, you won't have no loose garments. They'll get in your way. Sometimes we have a loose garment and it gets in our way. When your pants is too big and it's falling down, it's not good, right? Okay, so your belt of truth help it keep in place. Number two, the body of God's righteousness, the body armor, which is the brass plate of righteousness. That's number two, the brass plate of righteousness. The, okay, yes, the brass plate. Thank you, honey. The brass plate, I love you. The brass plate of righteousness, the body armor. It's a body armor. That's what it is. It protects your body from here up. Okay? It protects, you know, and, and they used it. The Roman soldiers used it. Uh, the police department uses it. It's called bulletproof vest. Okay? You got to have it on. So you, have, you put on the belt of truth, and then you put on the breastplate of righteousness, or the body armor of God's righteousness. Number two is the body armor of God's righteousness. Put on your bulletproof vest. Put it on there. That's all right. Put on your bulletproof vest. You got to put it on. Your spiritual bulletproof vest. Number three, put on your shoes. Put on the peace that comes from the good news. When you put on the right shoes, it, it will give you a certain type of peace that comes from the gospel. In fact, the shoes of preparation is called. The shoes of a pre preparation. It's like a runner. You got to have the right type of shoes to run. All right? You have to have the right type of shoes to run, and, and it's for preparation, and, and then you'll be fully prepared. That's what the Bible says. When I have the shoes on, I can be fully prepared. You know, can, can a soldier go into the jungle without boots? Absolutely not. If he puts on sandal, his feet are vulnerable to get bit by serpents or any kind of incident. Can I get an amen here? Amen. Praise the Lord. So you have to put on your shoes, the proper shoes, the shoes that help you. These are spiritual shoes, Deacon Don. They're not, they're not physical shoes. Remember, we're having a physical fight. It's not, it's not, I mean, we're having a spiritual fight and not a physical fight. Praise the Lord. Okay, so number one, you put on the belt of truth. Number two, you put on the body armor, which is your bulletproof vest, the breastplate of righteousness. See, when you put on that bulletproof vest, it keeps you right, keeps you righteous. Oh, man, I wish I had a witness in here. Praise the Lord. And then number three, the shoes, the shoes are for peace. So when you put on these shoes, you have a peace of mind. Come on, somebody. That you're not going to get bit by an insect. No serpent, no spider, no bug, no red ants. No can of sauce will fall on your feet. Praise the Lord. 
All right? It's protected. But see, when you're in your own environment, you're comfortable. So things happen. See? We're talking about a spiritual fight and not a physical fight. Okay? So and then the next one is, number four, you hold up the shield of faith. You have to have a shield of faith. Shield of faith protects me from far, far, fiery arrows of the devil. See, darts. See? So, see, when, when, you, when I got my shield of faith up, see, and somebody's talking against me, David, you know what happens? It hits the shield and it falls down to the ground. See? Somebody come in your face and they're talking correct. This is, listen, I really need everybody to listen to me. Especially when you're driving, you got to have your shield of faith up. Because they will do things to you and, and they'll come to your way. And you say, Boom, wow, you saw that guy? Don't even worry about it. Remember now, you're in a spiritual uh, fight, okay? That person got no clue they did that to you. That person has no clue they did that to you. Joe, the people that are coming against you don't have no clue they're doing that. They're being manipulated. So you have to have your shield of faith. Your shield of faith. So when they say that you're number one, praise the Lord, it'll hit your shield and it'll fall down to the ground. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, I'm teaching you how to stay calm in the spirit. Why do you want to give them? Why, will you, why do you want to let them trespass you? You should put a sign literally around your chest that says, no trespassing. Or you can become like MC Hammer. Can't touch this. And that's it. No trespassing. Can't touch it. So you have to hold up your, the shield of faith. And what's the purpose of holding up the shield of faith? It, it stops the darts. The arrows that come against you. The sword. The dagger that comes against you. The bullets they're shooting. Darts they're shooting. It's a bulletproof vest. Come on now. And then you have the bulletproof vest and now you have a shield. So you can become like them guys um, when there's riots. They have a shield. What do they call uh, Frank? Uh, Deacon Frank? The police officer when they have their shields. Riot control officers. They have a shield. They put a shield. They have a shield that covers them from the top of their head. To halfway to their knee. And it has a glass they can see. Well you need a shield like that. Alright. Somebody say amen. amen. You need a shield. You put on the helmet. Why do I have to put on the helmet? Because they'll protect me. They'll protect me. When the enemy tries to hit me over the head with a lie. Man I wish I had a witness in here. When, when, it's, when they're talking nonsense about it, it protects you. When you got the shield, the helmet of salvation, you got to think right. Because now your mind is on salvation. Salvation is prosperity. Prosperity is not what you possess in the material. Prosperity is what you possess in the spiritual. Every time you go to your house, every time you get in your vehicle, every time you put food in front of you, every time you put on clothes, that's prosperity. Praise the Lord. Every time you can get up and have hot water, that's prosperity. Okay? But remember, everything is for a season. Bad. So you have to know what season you're in. Okay, a season are evil times or evil days. What season am I in? Seasons are like weather. I got to know what to put on. See? If I go to New York City in December and January, I can't go with my Harley Davidson t-shirt and my jeans and boots. I better have a good coat and a good hat. Especially for the cocoa. Because it's cold over there. And they come out of your head. And as long as I got that cocoa cover, I'm fine. And good feet and good boots. See? Boots again. Because the ground is cold. Some of you northerners know what I'm talking about. The ground is cold. That snow hits, and you go out there with sneakers. Whoa! Goodbye, Charlie. Slip and slide. So you have to know what to put on. So putting on the, the helmet of salvation, or putting on salvation as a helmet. You hear that? Putting on salvation as a helmet. 
Wait a minute. I'm saved. What do it mean saved? I got Jesus. I got the Lord in my heart. That's what, that's what means saved. I can't talk like that. I can't think like that. I can't, you know, I can't do that to that person. All right? And then number six, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit. You should be using the sword of the spirit. Let me give you an illustration of the sword of the spirit. Someone say something about you. You know what you decree? Use the sword of the spirit. Say, brother, sister, I'm sorry that you feel that way about me, but this is what I'm going to say. Isaiah uh, 17. Help, somebody help me. Isaiah 17, uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But every tongue that rises up against me shall be condemned. Isaiah 17, 54 or 54, 17, which one is it? Somebody help me. So, 54, 17? Okay, so let's get it down. Help me here. Somebody. Thank you. Joe was right. So Isaiah 54, 17. That's what you say, see? That's picking up the sword of the Spirit. You're cutting that word. Frank, you're cutting that word. Oh, you've never been a good man. You've never been a good father. You never, blah, 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 blah. Sorry that that's your opinion about me, but that's not my reality. Guess what? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Got to pick up the word. as the sword of the Spirit. And then as you meditate. I'm almost done. As you meditate and pray in the spirit and stay alert. Look at the three, the three keys I'm, I'm giving you to do. This is, what, this is what the Holy Spirit told me to do and to tell y'all this. He said meditate and pray and stay alert. Can't fall asleep. I got to get my God fixed. I got to get my this fixed. Got to get that fixed. Get fixed quick. Don't be sleeping on things. So the six pieces of this equipment will help you. All right? Will help you overcome. And you know, this will help you fully be protected from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. When you put on the full armor. With exception, there's no protection in the back. And before the end of this teaching, it could be Tuesday or when I get back, I'll cover that area, the back, what you do with the back. <laughs> so well, let's go back to number one, putting on the belt of truth. Why should I put on the belt of truth? Well, if I put on the belt of truth, it will help me with this. Honesty. Put that on. When you have truth around your waist, you can't be lying. You just can't. You get convicted. You get convicted. You can't be in falsehood. You get convicted. When you have truth around you, that is, when truth is around you, so honor, it'll help you with your honesty. Number two, sincerity. So you'll be sincere. Say, so you know something? I'm sorry, but this is the way it is. And hmm, I'm sincere about it. You know, this is what you're going to get. So it helps you with honesty, openness. Watch how truth work with. You need to, these are things that we need in our life. Deacon Bobby, you, you got me? You got to be, you got to be open. You got to be open. You got to be open. Open to what? Openness help you with frankness. I'm frank about this. This is my frankness. I'm, 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 you know, I just can't do it. I'm sorry. So we need to stop saying things that sounds good. <laughs> oh, boy. Don't worry, I'm closing up. That's my second closing, by the way. We need to stop saying things that sound good. So it sound good, so I'll say it. You think I want to hear it. You think the people want to hear it. Want me to give you an example that sounds good? 
a brother or a sister may be going through something, and you know what you tell them? You look at them and you say, Jesus will help you, brother. I wish, Father, those that have an ear, let them hear what, what you're saying. You know they're going through something. You know your help. That's what you tell them to get out of it. Jesus. Well, that's a cop out. Because Jesus needs you to help them. You're supposed to help your brother and your sister. So you know they're going to start. Why are you putting it on Jesus? Because you don't want no part of it. I wish I had a real witness in here. I wish I had a real witness in here. So you don't want to be bothered with it. it. Ain't my problem. That's what you say. So you put it on Jesus. Jesus will help you, brother. <laughs> when Jesus says, I need you to help me. See? You need to help your brother and your sister. They need the help from your brother and sister. Your brothers and sisters. So I call this a loose garment. See? <laughs> you got a loose garment, see? God will help you. I'm sorry you're going through this. Meanwhile, you're going in your car. You're going home to a nice comfortable bed. And goodbye, brother and sister. You don't have to shout. I know I'm teaching right. <laughs> so I call that a loose garment. You need to belt the truth around you. You need to be honest. You do what you can. Sincere. Open, frankness, both parties, of course. See? So a loose garment, you know what it does? It prevents us from doing the kind of thing that God asks us to do. Mm. Mm -mm. A loose garment, when your pants is falling down, you can't pay attention to what God is telling you. Your pants are falling down, and you got to pick your pants up. You're going to look like these kids with their butt out. Showing their underwears. That we know that if they're incarcerated, they won't be doing that. They'll be pulling that pants up because you got people in there that'll be looking at that butt. So we need to be conscious and not subconscious of the armor of God. Don't be ever, don't be exposing. What God doesn't ask you to expose, be protecting what God gives you. And also, when you do that, when you work in honesty, sincerity, openness, and frankness, it'll put away shame. Write this down. It'll put away your shame. The belt of truth help you put away shame. I'm not ashamed no more. That's not me. That person's dead. So don't bring that person up anymore to me. I remember when you used to be, no, that's who you are now. And you want to remind me what I used to be because you're still a mess. I wish you hear me what I'm saying in the spirit. See, justification. I'm messing up, so I want to make you feel bad. Well, my name is Les, and I'm a mess. See, and that's it. So when you have this belt of truth, it'll help you put away shame. You don't have to work Walk around shameful. Can I get an amen? amen? Well, you don't have to be walking around with hypocrisy. Hypocrite. I know it hurts, but it's got to put on the belt because hypocrisy will keep your pants down and you'll show your butt to everybody. Put on the belt and you won't be showing no more hypocrisy. Or your religious cliché. God will help you, brother. I can't stand it. I can't. And then you call yourself a Christian. You know your brother and your sister have nothing to eat. You're, how can you eat that night, man? How can you put food inside of you knowing they have nothing to eat? 
It's one thing people you don't know because you can't, you're not there. But if you're there, you help them. You got it, David? That's prosperity. That's why we need uh, the gospel to be uh, pushed forward. But you have to watch where you're sowing your seed. Is it good ground or are they stealing money? Come on now, let me teach you like I'm supposed to teach you. Are we going to help Haiti or, 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 or we're going to use that excuse to put that in our pocket? And you know, when you give to the poor, you're lending to God. Come on now. When you give to somebody who has less fortune than you are, and you're not looking down on them, everybody's gone through that situation in life. Come on, if you understand what the pastor's saying, say amen. amen. Help! Amen. God's calling you to help. I don't want to get involved. Oh, okay. So when you have a problem, God's going to tell you, I don't want to get involved. Everybody's praying for their needs, and this is the revelation I got. He told me, I want you, when you come into my presence, to pray for my needs. And I said, God, you have needs? Do we have to pay your mortgage, your insurance? Do you need food? Not, type, not that type of need, son. I have needs on earth. I need people to be talked to. I need people to be taken care of. Go meet my needs. But I'm so busy talking to God about my needs. I need this. I need that. I need my husband. I need my, my wife. I need, my, I need work. I need this. Nah, 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 nah. Like a little baby. Put away your religious cliche. Put, all, put away your hypocr hypocrisy. I got... This is my third closing. I got five more minutes. Okay? See why it's important for you to put on the, 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 the belt of truth? Praise the Lord. It's important. And then you need to learn to put on the body armor of righteousness. The bre breastplate, like my wife said, of righteousness. Why? Why do I need to put that on? Because it protects my heart. Write it down. It protects my heart. It protects my heart. See, you think, oh, it's going to protect me from people shooting at me. No, it's going to protect my heart. It's a vital organ, the heart. It's a real vital organ. Everything comes out of our heart. How we feel, how we talk. Get your heart clean, and then you get your mind clean. If your heart is dirty, your mind's going to be filthy too. Proverbs 4.23, go there. Everybody go to Proverbs 43, 4.23. Yes, sir. We have to. We have to protect our hearts. Thank you, Father. We love you and praise you and glorify you. Are you learning something? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why I need my belt on? It holds up my pants in the physical. Well, in the spiritual, it'll bring me to, it brings protection to my waist. And, and I won't have no loose garments. Got it? It's important that you don't have loose garments. When in martial arts, in, in the form of karate, we normally have our gi a certain length. And when you look at us, you say, they got high waters. But there's a reason for that. So when I kick, you won't be. Just get my, my, my feet and my chin, you know? So when I kick, that's all you get, you know? Try to grab my legs. But I can grab your garment before I can grab your legs. Get it? Especially when it's coming at a certain speed, you know? It's coming at a certain speed. You won't be able to catch it. So the same thing here. No loose garments. When you have a loose garment, the devil can grab you through a loose garment and pull you in. Come on, somebody. I want you to see it in the spiritual. See in the spiritual? He can pull you. But if your clothes are tight and on you correctly, all right, your spiritual clothes, your full armor, he can't touch you. He can't touch you. Praise God. What did I say? Proverbs? Okay. Thank you, family. I'm sorry. 423. 
Okay? Bless you. Bless you, honey. It says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. It says, guard or watch over your heart. And the New New Living Translation, it says, above, above all else. Why would he tell you above all else? Above all else. Watch your heart. Guard your heart. Because it determines the course of your life. As you think in your heart. As you think in your heart. So you will be. See, from it, it flows the springs of life. So we have to protect our heart from all kind of evil. See, evil comes where? Towards your heart. Now, you thought it came towards your mind. No, I said the battlefield is in your mind. But they're shooting for your heart. See, if I can discourage you in the heart, I have you. Oh, I'm going to do this in the business. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this in the business this year. I'm going to expand the business. And if I shoot you down in the heart there, guess what? That's it. You lose, man. So I thought it was going to have something going on. I thought I was going to be able to do this. Well, you're listening to the wrong people. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you have to protect your heart from evil. When you put on that breastplate of faith, because the breastplate only works with faith, it'll let you live in the light. It'll let you live in the light and with a clear head. Write it down. When I put on my bulletproof vest, it lets me live in the light and also throw to carry with a clear head. When my mind is clear, I can see better. I don't worry about such things. That in my mind, I think it's happening, but it's not happening in the natural. It's only happening in my mind. Because the battlefield is in my mind. Okay? One more scripture to, to end it up? All right, let's do that. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, chapter 5. First Thessalonians, chapter 5. First Thessalonians, chapter 5. Verse 8. Verse 8. Thank you, Lord. I, I, the New Living Translation, I'm going to read it, but I like to read it first out of New King James because it says like this. When you're there, I'll, I'll read it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. All right, we'll see what's going on here. Thank you, Father. Wow. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mm. All right, keep me in prayer, and I'm going to keep you in prayer constantly. Because I'm only going to be taking care of business during the day, so at night time is my time. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let my, my daughter see the lights and all the, the city that never sleeps, you know, and then we'll go back. And, and she knows my routine. She's great. I mean, um, in my house, we're constantly praying. Either she's playing the piano, I'm strumming my guitar. Either I'm training and physically, or, you know, there's always something godly going on in the house. And I, and I asked that from, from her, you know. And you know what? Uh, I, I don't even have to ask. She just goes, goes and do it. But I asked the ladies, please, let's stay in harmony in the house. It's important to have peace. And with this type of teaching, you'll be able to. Say, wait a minute. We need peace in this house. This is where we lay our heads. No fire. Your house is a place of peace. Somebody say that with me. My house is a place of peace. Say it. Don't be afraid to say it. My house is a place of peace. Okay. We're there? Okay. So it says this. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love as the helmet, the hope of salvation. Let me read it in the New Living Translation. 
New Living Translation. It says, but let us who live in the light be clear-headed. See, so when you put on the, the breastplate, you got a deacon Don, you put on the breastplate, you know what I'm doing? I'm living in a place of light and clear-headed. You're protecting your heart from evil things coming in. Amen? So whatever you see, got it, Joe? Whatever you see, it ain't going to bother you. Joe, it's only a season, man. God's going to flourish and, and, and show you people off, I'm telling you. You think I haven't been praying? I've been praying strong, man. Strong in the Lord. He says, when you're persecuted, that's because your blessing is around the corner. Praise the Lord. And he's the God of new beginnings. Remember that? And the God of second chances. He's the God that put Humpty Dumpty back together again. So sometimes when we're in a place that we're not right, we feel like Humpty Dumpty. We feel like a broken egg. Let God put you back together. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name, all right? Okay, I got to keep my promise. That's the last one. Uh, let's close up. And I want to talk to the viewers. Um, we'll be seeing you soon. I got one more teaching, I believe, Tuesday. And then when I get back, we'll see what the Lord has for you, okay? Remember, put on the belt. Put on the belt. Put on the, the breastplate. Of righteousness, protect your, protect your, put on the belt, put on the spirit of truth, protect yourself from loose garments, and protect your heart above all else, above else, above everything else, protect your heart. God bless you. I'll see you real soon. Amen.